Are you content or covetous? And he said to them, this is Jesus, take care and be on your guard against all covetousness. It's a word we don't really use. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. One's life does not exist in the abundance of his possessions. So what is covetousness? Uh, It's kind of funny that in America, we don't really think of coveting or covetousness as sin. It's just kind of life. It's like, yeah, you got a house and you want a bigger house and you want your friend has a cool house and you want that house. And well, there's actually a list in the Old Testament. If you look, God made this list, 10 big things, 10 commandments. It made the list. It's number 10. You shall not covet your neighbor's house is what the Lord says. Shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male servant or his female servant or his ox or his donkey or anything that is your neighbor's. Coveting is essentially wanting what someone else has and even to the extent of you'd rather have it than let them have it. It's not like, man, they have a cool car. I'd kind of like a cool car. It's, I really want that car that they've got. Can I have that? I'd be okay with having that and they didn't have it. But it's also in the sense of you're never satisfied. It just keeps going. You get a, you get a house and you, you fix it up. You, it looks good. And then a few years later, you're like, I think I need a bigger house. You get an iPhone 4, and then the iPhone 4S comes out, and you're like, I think I need an iPhone 4S. What's the difference? Uh, Siri? Do you use it? Uh, not really, but I can if I want to. Oh, okay. I mean, this, this just communicates that this is the way that we live. You get a new, a new shirt or new pants or ladies' new dress, a new car, whatever it is, it's awesome for some months maybe. Maybe a year, maybe two years, but it always runs out. You always want something more. You always... You always have to get more and more and more, something newer and something fresh. But that's what covetousness is. Jesus says to be, be on your guard against it. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. This is a hard word for us, especially the church in America. Our life does not consist in what we own, what we've got, and what we can accumulate, our job, our status. It doesn't, it doesn't consist in anything that we possess. The Bible talks a lot about idols. The Old Testament is just riddled with the the prophets coming and exposing idols. And and we like to say right now, ah, we don't really have idols. I don't have idols. I don't bow down before. I don't make a graven image and bow down before it. Spare me. We do the same thing. An idol is essentially anything in your life. Track with me here. Everybody look. An idol is anything, anything in your life, but Jesus, that if you lost it, your status would go down. Your view of yourself would go down. You wouldn't be, I wouldn't be Brett as much as I was anymore. This can be oftentimes good things. This can be ministry. What, what happens if for some reason I'm not your pastor anymore? If I'm like, man, I'm just not, I'm not who I should be. I'm not Brett. I mean, my, my value is lower. Then that was an idol. It was something that I was looking to, to be fulfilled. It can be a car. It can be possessions. It can be small stuff. But what in your life, think of everything in your life, if you lost it, that you would just be completely wrecked. Not saying that things aren't tough and we don't struggle with things and they wouldn't be hard. But what things, if you lost it, just wrecks your whole life? You don't even really want to go on living. You're like, what's the point? This relationship's gone. What's the point of even living? Glorifying Jesus. This this is tough work and we can... The Bible kind of talks about idols, and we like to think of them kind of on a surface level, like money, uh, just normal possessions. But those are kind of surface idols. But Tim Keller, if you've read anything about him, he talks about deeper idols. He talks about uprooting where the idol's coming from. You know, if if we're worshiping clothes or money or things like that, that, that's kind of how it's flushing out, that we have this idol. But the true idol is maybe status. It's like, I've got to look a certain way. I've got to be a certain way. I've got to make sure that people understand I am this kind of person. And really, that's kind of the root of it. And so to get into these things, to dig down deep and uproot our idols, we've got to get, we've got to, get to the root. You can't just look, oh man, what about pornography? Is, is, is that the root of the idol or is that just fruit of it? That's the fruit. 
The root can be many things. The root can be fulfillment, that you're not being fulfilled and you don't have relationships that you want and you, you think you need this and you want sex outside of marriage and you want sex without having to have a relationship with someone like God ordained it to be and gifted it to us to be. So you're discontent in that and you covet that and so you worship the God of pornography. It's not that kind of stuff that's the problem. It's really deeper down in the roots. And so you just got to pray in your own life, Father, Reveal to me what the root is of this idol, of these things that I'm struggling with, these things that I'm battling with. If we just say, oh, it's just he likes to shop or she likes to shop. It's deeper than that. It's deeper than that. It's usually status. It's things like things like this. It's trying to justify our existence outside of what Christ has done for us.